Davis, over to Marlon Mack. I, I'll tell you, Marlon Mack, I thought, was really underappreciated in Indianapolis. Uh, injuries sort of derailed him. But once upon a time, and I guess that's the best way to put it, what, three years ago, uh, he was a pretty dynamic running back. And then naturally, when you get a player like Jonathan Taylor, you just have no interest in, in using a guy like Mack. And, and I kind of feel like he's now on this Carlos Hyde trajectory where he's going to bounce around the league quite a bit. But I got to tell you, last round, no, no issue for me taking Marlon Mack and stashing him and just hoping maybe he gets 20 touches in a game because uh, if, if he's healthy, and I know it's a big if, but if he is healthy, he was serviceable in the past. Yeah, I mean, he had a 1,000-yard season in 2019, uh, 261 touches, 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, weirdly enough, he did actually get 33 targets as a rookie in Indianapolis. So uh, I don't even remember what that 27 Indianapolis, uh, that 2017 Indianapolis team was. My guess would be that was when they were sort of adrift after the, the Andrew Luck bomb went off and they just didn't really know what uh, to do with themselves. And he was also, you know, this is a long time ago now, but he was like a great player in college. I mean, he at, at uh, Southern Florida, like he was unbelievable, came out at 20 years old, had a 1,000 yard season with nine touchdowns as an 18 year old, uh, you know, caught at least 20 passes every year that he was in college. But I, and I think we saw this with, you know, multiple running backs, right? You tear your Achilles, you're just a different guy. Dante Foreman was a guy we all liked. He's kind of bounced around, you know, he resurged a little bit with the Titans last year. Uh, and is now a member of the Panthers, Cam Akers. You know, we're still, we don't know what Cam Akers is going to be. He came back from that Achilles injury. And honestly, uh, he looked terrible, right? When, when the Rams were making that playoff run, we were all just begging anyone play, you know, play, put Sony Michelle out there, put Daryl Anderson out there. He looks terrible. Uh, I, I actually think probably Rex Burkhead is the more interesting guy for, for a last round selection because as we were just talking about, Damian Pierce was not a big pass catcher at Florida. We're not expecting him to be a really good pass blocker. And that is what Burkhead does, right? Burkhead is a good pass blocker. He is a good pass catcher. He's a great third down back. And um, I mean, if, if, if it doesn't work out with Damian Pierce, I would anticipate the Texans, you know, kind of being down in a lot of games. You know, I'm not anticipating a lot of uh, 21 carry games where they're running backs where they're running downhill with uh, with a 10 point lead. So Burkhead is probably slightly more interesting to me. All the either both are fine, though, for like 18th round selections, because as we saw last year, the Texans don't care, right? They're, they're, no one, no one's getting in there with pedigree, right? David Johnson was just flat benched, right? And they, I think they were paying right. David Johnson like nine, nine million dollars last year, and they were like, you know what, you stink. We're playing Royce Freeman. We, we don't care. So, uh, whoever is playing well, I think is going to get the ball.